Welcome to Almost Here, Round the Corner of Future Technology Podcasts with Richard Jacobs. Future technologies poised to transform our lives for better or worse are the focus of this podcast. Almost Here means these technologies are now here and starting to be used. We're just around the corner from Bitcoin to artificial intelligence, 3D printing, blockchain, virtual reality, and more. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Future Tech Podcast. I'm your host, Juliette Lamar, and I have with us today Rob May. He is the co-founder and CEO at Paula and Botchain. Welcome, Rob. Hi, thanks for having me. Of course, thank you. We're very excited about, about AI here. And why don't you go ahead and let our listeners in on what Botchain is and Talia and all of that. So Talia is a company that, does a, that builds an artificial intelligence-driven knowledge base. So think of the next generation of Confluence or Google Docs or something like that. Um, you know, I know this is a short podcast, so I won't go into sort of all the cool you know, features that has. But just imagine laying AI and a digital assistant over top of all that to do a lot of the management, uh, tagging, categorization, verification, et cetera. And as part of this, uh, we came up with a project uh, a little over a year ago called Botchain, because one of the things that you can do with a Tala knowledge base is you can take a page or a group of pages or the whole knowledge base and turn it into a, a bot that you can deploy on your website or via chat uh, or you know, however you want to do that. And one of the problems this leads to is that there is really no way to validate a bot the way you would validate a website. So when you go to uh, you know, Starbucks.com, you see a little green bar and a lock up in your browser. Uh, that says this is a secure website, and uh, Starbucks has been issued a digital certificate that validates that uh, Starbucks actually owns this domain and this website, and that doesn't happen for bots. So if you get a text from a Starbucks bot, you actually don't know that Starbucks owns it. And it's become a big problem mm. on some systems, uh, most notably Telegram, uh, but also Slack, where uh, where people will spoof bots the way that people used to spoof web pages and emails uh, to try to you know steal information or or, or do something like that. So. Uh, so what Botchain is, uh, is, a, um, is a decentralized ledger for bot registration and identification. And we use bot very loosely here to mean any type of general autonomous agent. So anything that's going to be software that's going to change over time and adapt um, and interact with other similar software or interact with humans, we can, um, you know, we can do that. And uh, and we've got a bunch of partners. Uh, we've partnered with uh, nine or 10 companies already, including some of the biggest bot creation platforms in the world, like Gupshup and Howdy. And so the, the early partners, uh, once launched, will reach about 50,000 developers and 400 million end users. So it's, uh, it's going pretty well so far. I would say pretty well so far. And it seems to be something that a lot of people would use. Um, if you want to do just a quick overview, you said that there's a lot of things that this Talia does, but give us just a couple of the highlights. Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing is to be able to take any um, any document and be able to sort of bring it to life, right? Uh, you know, automate some of the workflows that are in there. So you could see that if you go through a Tala page and maybe it's a how-to document um, on some piece of software that you have, that some of the links that lead to actions could be clickable and then Tala could go ahead and actually execute the action. So for an IT use case that's very simple would be, uh, you, you go to the knowledge base to search for how do you reset your password to Okta and uh, Tala can, you know, retrieve that answer, but then also execute on the plan for you. Um, so we do that in a lot of different ways. Very cool. Um, tell me a little bit about how you got involved, or, you know, how you came with this idea and your journey to becoming the co-founder of Botchain. Well, this really started with one of our early customers for Tala who asked us to, we used to keep everything under a single bot. And they felt like the bot was becoming too complicated, and um, and so asked us to parse it off into multiple bots. And and once that happened, we realized that we were going to quickly end up in a excuse me in a world where there were going to be bots talking to bots and bots interacting with humans, and these bots were all going to be very different. And as a result, they were going to need to identify themselves. So about the same time, I happened to meet the blockchain CTO at Ernst and Young. He's no longer there, but uh, but at the time he was, and we, I started telling him about this, and he basically said, "Look, these big companies like Ernst and Young and PwC and Deloitte, the, the big audit firm, uh, are going to start audit auditing machine learning processes someday. And the reason they're going to do that is because today, when you use a piece of software on January 1st and you use it again on June 1st, it does the exact same thing. It's rules based. But as you start to deploy more." adaptive learning software, that's not true. You may use the software, do the exact same thing and get a slightly different answer. 
And some of those times, some very small percentage of those times, your, uh, your answer may be incorrect. These bots can actually learn uh, incorrect things sometimes, just like a human can. So then the question becomes, well, how do you track that? How do you keep tabs on it so that you can track it back? And um, you know, how do you identify these entities in general? And so all of that really led us uh, to, uh, to the creation of, of BotChain. Uh, there's so many different, different kinds of problems that, that you could solve with this technology. Yes, definitely. Um, you know, I think one of the most interesting things was if you saw the recent Google duplex demo, um, yes. you know, Google has a yeah, piece of software that is able to make a call on your behalf and, um, you know, schedule a hair appointment or a restaurant appointment. And, and it's really interesting because it's sort of indicative of um, what's going to happen, right? We're going to quickly be in this world where we're like, wow, Am I talking to a human? Am I talking to a bot? And so one of the things that BotChain will allow is, you know, if all the bots are registered on a giant decentralized ledger, you can, you know, you can, you can identify the, the bots. You can sort of ask them to validate themselves and, um, you know, depending on the type of bot and how you interact with it, uh, you know, understand if you're talking to a human or to, or to a bot. And I think that's most people's hang up on AI in general, because um, I think I would love to have an assistant that, you know, keeps track of things that are, you know, over over human capabilities, right, and can make phone calls for me. Right. Everyone wants that. But then all of a sudden, when you're on the receiving end, you think, have I been tricked? Am I being duped? But you're, you know, why do people feel that way, do you think? Well, it's hard, right? There's this concept in robotics and AI called the uncanny valley. And the idea yeah. behind the uncanny valley is that, you know, we, we don't, there, there's a certain, we, we don't like robots to be too realistic um, or, or we think they're people and we start to have problems with them. And so, uh, and, and so they're really hard to build because if you build one that seems like a human, people, people freak out and they feel like it's inauthentic. Um, and if you build one that doesn't seem like a human because it responds a different way or, or makes some you know, mistakes or isn't as intelligent for whatever reason or is more straightforward, then people complain about the user experience in general. Um, and it's really <laughs> not possible to build one that sounds like a human and also performs and is as knowledgeable as a human yet. So, um, so sometimes we feel bad and we feel like we got duped because we thought we were talking to a human and it turns out that this thing can't really execute on the kinds of tasks that a human can. And yeah, you're expecting a lot more. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, I think, um, I think you'll see a lot more, um, a lot more bots cause this problem. I think you'll, um, I, I think we'll get there. I think you'll have a lot more um, technology that these bots can execute on. And so I think maybe that gap will go away at some point. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely there for now. It is, it is so interesting how, how humans uh, trips our circuits when we can't differentiate between something being a human or robotic and you know, even if it had a sign on it that said, you know, I'm a robot, blah, blah, blah. I mean, there's so many movies made about this. And it's a very interesting way that our brains work in response to things that are that are robotic or that are AI in that way. It's a very interesting, you know, psychological idea. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think, it, you know, I think a lot of what AI is going to do is it's going to re, um, it's going to open up some old debates about what it actually means to be human even. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, uh, anyway. Well, <laughs> yeah, that's a whole other rabbit hole. Um, but in working yeah. with, with AI and, and, with, and with bots in this way, you know, what are some of the biggest lessons that, that you have learned in working in this space? Um, wow, there's a lot, actually. <laughs> Uh, at the, you know, the, the, the most, the simplest thing that you can say, at least about the chatbot piece uh, of what we're talking about is that, uh, people don't read. So one of the funniest things we've learned is like, <laughs> if you, if you build a bot, uh, and it'll, it'll go to somebody and it'll say, Hey, you know, would you like, uh, uh, you know, would you like water or coffee? And people say, yes. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you're like, well, it wasn't a yes, no question. So, uh, so that's, uh, you know, that's pretty interesting. Um, the technology is really hard. And uh, natural language helps if it's domain specific. So that's the, um, you know, most of these language models are trained on Wikipedia and Wikipedia is just very generic content. And so then what happens is uh, if your business vernacular for a company or an industry is very specific, a lot of times the natural language models don't, don't work very well. So there's, you know, for all the progress we've seen in certain fields of AI, like playing games and machine vision, there's still a whole lot to do in natural language. It's coming along pretty quickly, but um, but but there there's some major breakthroughs that we still need. Absolutely. So, what is kind of your ultimate goal with Botchain and Tala? Is it you know time saving for people because it's going to start taking a lot of the 
a lot of the grunt work out of out of life? Yeah, I, it's it's a little bit of both, right? So for Tala, our ultimate goal is to be able to build digital workers, and that's a probably decades long process of you know increasing automation and AI, uh, increasing use of different voice and text interfaces to to be able to have people interact and automate work. With botchain, it's really about helping to lay the uh, the compliance. Um, and trust groundwork for this AI revolution, right? It's really about the Google duplex problem of how do I know if I'm talking to a human or a bot and how can this blockchain project go out and really, um, you know, really help, uh, you, know, you know, help prove um, and control and, and, you know, give confidence to people that are interacting with bots of all kinds. And it, for people to come and get this product, um, you, you have a pre-sale going on right now, I see. And, is that the best kind of way to connect with you? Yeah, if people are interested in Tala, I think just come to the website and you can, um, uh, you know, you can you can go through a free trial, uh, you know, for your company. And it, you know, people that are interested in Botchain, particularly the token purchases, um, you know, we, we we do have a private sale going on, and then we'll do a public pre-sale sometime in July. And so the tokens are not available yet um, in the U.S. Are they available elsewhere? Uh, yeah, pretty much. You know, most of the rest of the world. Yes. Got it. Um, how easy, I guess, is it for companies to implement Botchain or Tala into their inner workings and their network? Well, if somebody wants to deploy Tala, it's uh, it's pretty straightforward. Um, you know, we integrate with a lot of different systems, Slack, Microsoft Teams. Uh, you don't need a chat system. We can integrate also with, you know, email, Gmail, uh, stuff like that. And we integrate with a lot of different uh, content repositories and data sources. So um, so it's pretty easy to set up and, and start using. But the thing to keep in mind is that with a lot, as with a lot of AI systems, uh, it gets better over time with more training and feedback. So the, while the initial experience is good, it may not always be perfect until it's had some time to um, to really get used to your organization. Yeah, because it has to have that learning aspect. Yeah, exactly. And then you know, if people that want to deploy Botchain, uh, it really you know it's typically a technical integration right now. So we've open sourced a lot of the software. You can download that. Uh, there's a developers group. Uh, email group that you can join, and um, yeah, and so, so so you have to be pretty technical to get started. <laughs> I, I can imagine because it is it is a very complex thing we're trying to do here, right? <laughs> and with Talia, you said right, you can schedule exactly. a, a demo. You can schedule a demo as, as well for to try it out and see if it's right. Yeah, for you. sometimes when that's because sometimes really really large enterprises don't like to um, they don't like to just start trials and install software. They sort of want to see a demo first and understand if it's the right thing for them. Yeah, absolutely. So going into, I guess, the future of Tala, you know, where do you see this technology growing and branching into and what, what areas do you see it being most helpful in? Um, it's a really good question. Uh, you know, I think Tala itself is really going to become very much an automation company as we pursue this digital workers vision. So I think it expands into a lot of other systems and functionality and really really gets to the point of um, increasing productivity, um, you know, uh, giving humans special superpowers. Like you can think about it as if you had a construction worker who were, wore a robotic exoskeleton mm -hmm. and that person could now lift 400 pounds instead of 100 pounds. Well, what's the cognitive equivalent of that? That's what we're trying to do with Tala. That's huge. The amount, the amount of work that yeah, you could get I done <laughs> in the, the amount of time that it would make you you superhuman. I, I feel like that is what people need to focus on more so with AI is how instead of the the artificial intelligence taking over our jobs and taking over, you know, our mind spaces and such, it's more of a partnership. You know, you're using this robot so that you have more free time or that you have you can use your mind for more creative tasks and less copy paste email stuff. These are the things we're working together for. Right. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and that's what I think you'll see that'll be very different from traditional software is that this, the, the, the human AI model is a little more collaborative uh, and less of just a, you know, I think we think about, um, I think if we think about traditional software in terms of just sort of executing tasks. Uh, and this is a little more about decision making along with software, which is a different way to think about it. And, and one of the holdups is really that a lot of, a lot of companies are trying to figure out, um, you know, what it's going to take. And uh, and sort of really sort of how they want to change their business processes to accommodate some of this stuff. Now I'm looking at your website here, and you have Slack training by Talia. What is Slack training? 
Uh, that's just a separate little bot that we built that demonstrates some of the some of the things that Tala can do in Slack um, and shows shows you how to just you know use Slack. So it's so it's sort of a, a demo really. Ah, uh, okay, got it. Well, this is all just super interesting, and I hope that people will come to embrace things. And what what do you think is really that barrier? Not barrier to entry, but when people start using assistance, what do you think is is causing people not to embrace this? Besides what we've talked about, about robots and AI being innately kind of creepy, you know, what do you think is really the holdup for people? Yeah, it's, um, uh, you know, I think a lot of it is just, it's a combination of mismatched performance expectations and, um, you know, and then not really knowing the best use cases. So a lot of times when new technology comes out, there's a lot of different things it could do. None of them are great enough uh, to really be a good a good solution yet. And, uh, you know, these things take time. And so, I, you know, I think it's that mismatch that's sort of holding the industry back. Well, hopefully people can get on the right track with each other and, and really start to understand. Maybe the education is, is what is missing. They don't, they don't truly understand how it works. And like you said, all the use cases that can be applied to. And education will bring confidence. It will eliminate the fear. People just need to get out and read about this and see exactly where this can take them. Yeah, exactly. And I, I, you know, I think that's a that's a big part of it. As you start to have some successful use cases that certain businesses read about and certain people see, and they talk to their friends about it and and everything else, it'll it'll grow over time. I'm I'm pretty sure. I mean, we see some we see some successful use cases already, and I'm sure those will become more public over time, and uh, and that'll drive a lot of uh, a lot of good stuff. Rob, last question. Tell us the best way to get in touch with you guys for Bot Chain for Tala. Um, where's the best way for people to do their own research, educate themselves, and maybe get involved with your Telegram or blog? or email you questions? Yeah, I would go to uh, botchain.network um, to get started. And there you can sign up for the email list. You can, um, you know, you can join the Telegram network. Uh, you can get a lot of information, read the white paper. Uh, or if you're just more interested in the core Tala product, just go to, you know, Tala, T-A-L-L-A.com. Wonderful. Rob, thank you so much for taking the time to join us here today. All right. It was great chatting with you. That's Rob May. He's the co-founder and CEO at Tala and at Botchain. Thank you all so much for tuning in. This has been Juliet Lamar with Feature Tech Podcast. You have been listening to Almost Here, Around the Corner of Future Technology Podcast with Richard Jacobs. Subscribe to this podcast, post to review, to discover more future technologies that are poised to transform our lives for better or worse, such as Bitcoin, artificial intelligence, 3D printing, blockchain, virtual reality, and more.